Okay, so here is your question related to this module. Here you need to create a circle with radius 5 unit, a square with side 5 unit length and a triangle with edge length of 5 unit. Now make three corresponding layers, three layers with name radius, three layers with name circle, square and triangle and place these objects on the respective layers. Now assign a red color and ISO dash line type to layer which contains circle and a line weight of 0.5 to the layer which contain square and triangle. So let's start with the geometries first. So I'll go to circle, click at a point and make a circle with five unit radius. There we have it. Now let's zoom out. Okay, let's go to rectangle, click at a point and make a rectangle with length five and a width of five. So that will make a square. And now the third geometry, which will make with polygon, select polygon. Now in number of sides, enter three and press enter. Now specify center, which should be anywhere. Now we need to specify the edge length. So click on this edge option and click at any point here and specify the edge length as five unit and press enter. So there we have it, all the three geometries. Now we need to make corresponding layers. For that, I'll go to layer properties manager. Click on new and give it a name. So let's name it as circle, make second layer, name it as square and make third layer, name it as triangle. Now we need to put these objects on the respective layer. For that, I'll close this layer properties manager, select the circle, click on this drop down and select circle. Let's press escape. Now select the square, click on drop down and select a square. And once again, press escape. Now select the triangle, click on the drop down, select triangle and press escape. So now we have made the objects and we have assigned them on different layers. Now we need to change their properties, but using the layer properties manager. So in the first case, we need to assign red color and ISO dash line type to layer containing circle. So go to layer properties manager again, go to this circle layer and assign red color. So I'll click on color box, select red, click on OK. Now scroll it a little bit here. Here we have the line type, click on it and we don't have any line type here. So I'll click on load and let's load ISO dash, which is here. Click on OK, select ISO dash, click on OK. And there we have it, ACAD ISO dash. That's loaded here. Now you can collapse this to see the effect and there we have it. Let's now bring it back. Now I'll change the second and third properties, which are related to square and triangle layer. Now in this case, we need to change the line weight to 0.5 for both of these layers. So here we have the line weight, click on it, change it to 0.5 and change it to 0.5 for this case. And there we have it. Now the properties are assigned. Let's get back to the drawing and let's see the effect. Now here in this case, we have some problems. The scale of this line here in the case of circle is very large that we need to change. So I'll type LT scale that's for line type scale and the scale factor is set to one. Let's change it to 0.25 and press enter. And you can see that it will change the scale. In this case, we are not changing the scale from the property panel, but we are changing it using LT scale command. So once again, I'll type LT scale and I'll change it to 0.1. And that looks quite appropriate. So you can use this also to change the line type scale of all of the geometries which are present here in the drawing area. Now we need to ensure that the line weight is visible for both of these objects. So for that, we simply need to turn on this line weight display. And there we have it. It's now visible. So here we have the final drawing as per the required layer assignments. So now we'll start adding annotations and dimensioning to our drawing and I will begin this module with the dimensioning tools. So you can start dimensioning from the annotation panel of home tab. And when you click on this drop down, you'll see lots of tools which are available for dimensioning. Also, we have this dimension tool which can be used for creating dimensions. Apart from that, we can also make dimensioning and other annotations from this annotate tab. So when you go to the annotate tab, you'll see 
many different panels like text, dimensions, center lines, leader lines, tables, markup, annotations. Now these are different panels which can be used for adding different kind of annotations. And here we have the dimensioning panel which we will use for this lesson. So I'll use this simple drawing and we'll add many dimensions to this drawing using the default ISO 25 dimension style which can be seen here. We have this ISO 25 dimension style. We'll learn more about dimension style later on in this module. But first we'll start with this dimension style and we'll add some of the dimensions. So let's go to this drop down. I'll click here and you'll see lots of tools which are available for dimensioning. So I'll start with the linear dimension. So this linear option can be used to add horizontal or vertical dimensions. So let's click on this point and let's click on this point and now click on the third point to place the dimension and here we have it. So the dimension has been placed. So obviously for placing the linear dimension you need three inputs the first point second point and the place where you will put your dimension. There is also an alternate method of using this tool. So I'll select the same command and now directly I'll press enter. Now the point selection cursor will change into this big box and now instead of selecting the starting and end point you can simply click on the line and it will pick the dimension. Now you only need to click at a point to place the dimension. So you can use any of these methods. Now I told you that this linear dimension can be used to create only horizontal and vertical dimension. So let's select it and let's try to add the dimensioning on the slant line. So I'll press enter, click on the slant line. And now you'll notice that we can make horizontal dimension if I move my cursor here and we can make a vertical dimension if I move my cursor to this vertical direction. So you can choose any of these methods. But in order to make a dimension which is parallel to this slant line, you need to select the second option. So I'll press escape and now I'll go to the same drop down and select this aligned option. Now using this aligned option, you can create that aligned dimension. So click at the first point, second point and the point where you want to put the dimension. And here we have this aligned dimension. In this case also you can directly press enter and select the line for creating the dimension. Now let's look at the other option. So I'll go to this drop down, select the angular. So obviously using this tool you can add angles to lines or arcs. So I'll click on this first line, the second line and now here we have the angle. Now this angle will be placed at the point where you click. So in this case if I click here the angle in between these two lines at this side will be created. If I move it to this side the angle will be created here even to this side or even to this side. So you can decide the side where you want to put this angle. So I'll click here and now I'll repeat the angle tool. But this time instead of selecting two lines I'll select an arc. So click on this arc and now we have this included angle for an arc. So you can use this tool to create an angle for an arc also. So let's erase this angle for the arc. And now I'll go to the next tool. So click on the drop down, select this arc length. So this arc length is simply the length of arc. So I'll click on this arc and place it at point. So this is simply the arc length from this point to this point. It's not the radius. It's not even diameter of this arc. It's the arc length along the circumference of this arc. Let's go to the next tool which is radius. So obviously using radius tool you can create radius for the geometries which can have radius. For example circle or arc. So I'll click on this circle and here we have the radius. Now you can select the same tool click on the arc and it will also have radius like this so you can create it. Similarly, you can select this diameter option and in this case instead of this R a phi sign will be added. So I'll click on the circle and here we have it the diameter. Now in this case you can see that this phi sign which indicates the diameter will be added. If you press enter to repeat the command and select the arc this time we have the diameter for this arc with the diameter sign. Now we have quite a crowded drawing so I'll remove some of these dimensions to free some space here and now let's look at other options. So I'll click on this drop down again and here we have this jogged dimension. So this jogged dimension can be used to add radius to different geometries like circle or arc and it will be added along with a jogged line. So let's select this arc for instance and now I'll specify the center location. The center location of this arc is here. So click somewhere over here. It should not necessarily be on the center. I'll simply click here. And now we have 
this jog line if you look at closely you'll find that so click at the first point to place the first jog line and the second point and here we have this jog line so these jog lines are generally used where the curvature of arc is very large and the center of that arc falls outside the current drawing area for those cases you can use this jog line for now i'll simply erase it and now let's look at the last option which is ordinate so i'll click on this drop down and here we have this ordinate option so using this ordinate option you can enter x or y coordinates of any point so i'll select this rightmost point the bottom right point and now in order to add the x or y coordinate value simply click here and now move your cursor so as you can see that this line is moving along the x axis and it's completely horizontal that means this will be the axis of y now click here now click on this point again but this time i am moving it in downward direction and now it's following the point along the vertical axis and that is the x coordinate so it might be a little bit confusing to you at this point but we'll use another example later on in this module to make this ordinate dimensioning more clear for now you can assume that this is the y coordinate value and this is the x coordinate value so up to this point we have seen that all of these dimensions are made on the default layer which was currently active and you can see that in this list also the drop down it shows use current for the layer so whatever the current layer is that will be used for all of these dimensions but you can select your own layer as well for the dimensions so i'll click on this drop down and now i'll select some other layer so in this case let's select this layer one and now the dimensions will be made on that layer so i'll go to this drop down once again and i'll select radius now click here and make a radius and you can see that it's now made on layer 1 and the properties of layer 1 are also inherited here similarly you can switch to any other layer and when you make the dimension let's select diameter in this case the dimension will be made on that layer even now the layer will not change when you go to home tab you'll find that still we have this layer 0 as the currently active layer but still the dimensions will be made on the layer which we select you can even select the dimensioning from this annotation panel so even if you select it from here the dimensions will be added on the layer which you assigned on this annotate tab dimensions panel so since we have assigned the layer 2 the dimension will be made on layer 2 irrespective of the current layer so that was all about creating simple and basic dimensions in AutoCAD. In the previous lesson, we have used many different dimensioning tools to add dimensions on this drawing. But there is a direct tool also, which can be used to add all of those dimensions in your drawing. And that is dim command. So you'll find that tool or command on the annotation panel. And it is this big dimension tool. On the annotate tab dimensions panel you'll find dim command here so you can use the command dim or you can use this tool here from the dimensions panel or from home tab annotation panel so I'll go to this annotate tab and I'll select it from this dimension panel and now I'll use this tool to add almost all of those dimensions so click here and now we'll start with the linear dimension so first I'll click on the first point here then the second point and now I'll click here to place the dimension so obviously the first dimension has been placed now similarly if you directly go to the line instead of selecting the points you can see that now again we have the same linear dimension now if you want to place a line dimension on this kind of dimensioning simply click here and place the dimension obviously you can also create linear dimension so for that simply click on the first point click on the second point and now press and hold shift key and you'll notice that your dimension will change into linear dimensions so in this case since i'm moving my cursor in this vertical direction it's making this vertical and if i move it downwards it will make this simple horizontal dimension so you can select any of these dimensions simply by pressing the shift key so i'll click here and we have this horizontal dimension also now i'll press escape key and i'll remove some of these dimensionings now let's go to this tool again and this time i'll go to this circle and now as you can see that we have this diameter so we can add the diameter 
obviously we can add a radius also so I'll once again go to the circle and now look at the command line so when this dimension is on the circle you'll notice that the command line has more options which is radius jogged and angular so let's select R and press enter now the dimensioning will change into a radius so now click on the circle and we can add a radius here instead of a diameter similarly you can do that for this arc also so here we have this radius you can change it to diameter simply by pressing D and pressing enter now if you want to add arc length instead of radius or diameter all you need to do is type L and if you look on the command line you'll notice that L has been highlighted in this arc length option that's why we need to enter L now type L press enter and now instead of radius or diameter we have this arc length here now let's look at the next option which was angular and to add angular dimensions you simply need to select this angular option or you can also type A and press enter for this angular option now you need to select the vertices so click on this line and click on this line and here we have it so the 90 degree angle has been added on this vertex you can even select more vertices if you want so I'll simply click on this line and as you can see that we are now making this horizontal dimension but that hardly matters simply go to the second line and click and that dimension will change into this angular dimension now in case you want to add the jog dimension which we have added in the previous case once again go to this arc and now select J from the keyboard and press enter so that will start the jogged dimension now click on this arc and specify the center point so I'll specify the center location over right somewhere over here and obviously the jog distance here so I'll zoom into this area and this is the jog length which is quite small in this case and here we have it the jogged dimension now in order to add the ordinate dimension you need to select that option from the command line which we can see here we have this ordinate option so select the ordinate option and now click on the first point so obviously in this case if you follow this X axis so that will make the Y coordinate and I'll explain this logic later on in the upcoming videos so click here and that's obviously the Y value of the coordinate now click on this point again and now follow this Y axis and this will make the X coordinate value so the x coordinate value of this point is 192.23 and the y coordinate value is 99.67 now let's verify this result so I'll press escape twice now I'll type ID press enter and now click on this point and now look at the command line so we have x as 192 which is here 192.23 and when you expand the command line you can see the results and the y value as 99.67 which is here 99.67 so that's the result so let's collapse this command line so this was all about the dim command which can be efficiently used to increase your productivity so now we have made the dimensions in our drawing let's modify these dimensions but before that let's have a look at a new layer which is always created when you make a new dimension and that layer is def point so when you click on this layer drop down you'll notice this def points layer so this is the definition points layer short for def points which is always created whenever a dimension is added and it stores all the definition points of your dimensions it is always recommended to keep this definition points layer you should not delete it and if you try to delete this in definition points layer from the layer properties manager it won't be deleted but obviously you can use ladle tool to delete it but if you delete this def points layer the drawing may start to show some errors also the def points layer is on a no plot layer that means the contents of this def points layer will not appear when you print your drawing so most people use this property of def points layer to place objects which they don't want to show in the plot but I would not recommend that you can create a new layer and put all of the objects on that and you can turn off the plot for that layer now moving on here we have this drawing with some of the dimensions now this dimension is basically divided into three parts now the first part here let's look at this dimension I'll zoom here now the first part is the dimension line which is this line with these arrowheads at the end so that's called the dimension line now we have the extension line which are these two lines so this one is the extension line and this one is the extension line you can see that 
by default the extension lines start from the point where we clicked but a small gap is maintained so that is done to keep the dimensions illegible so that the dimensions can be easily identified from the drawing also the third part is dimension text which is here now we can modify all of these parameters of the dimension separately and I'll start with this dimension here so let's click on this dimension and now move on to this grip and hold your cursor don't click you'll see plenty of options here let's start with the stretch option so click on this stretch and now you'll be able to stretch this dimension simply wherever you want similarly when you hold your cursor there select move with dimension line it will have a similar effect on your dimensioning now go to this grip and now select move text only and obviously in this case the text will move but your dimension line and extension line will remain unaffected so let's click here and here we have it now let's go to the same grip and now select move with leader line and a new leader line will be added with its trailing end on the dimension line just like this so let's go to this again and let's select move above dim line and it will take your dimension above dimension line no matter where the position of this text is let's go here and now select center vertically we have it here it's now centered vertically on the dimension line and now let's select the last option which will reset its position to the default value just like this there are also plenty of options which are associated with different grips for example in this case we have this diameter now selected and let's select this grip now in this grip we have only these two options the stretch and flip arrow we have already seen this stretch by which you can stretch the grip point and using flip arrow you can change the direction of this arrow so I'll go to this grip and select flip arrow now in this case the dimension line has this flipped arrow you can do the same for this side as well so I'll flip the arrow and here we have it so now this flipping of arrow can be used at crowded places where the arrow might be overlapping with the parts of the drawing or if there is not enough space for the dimension text in that case you can flip the arrow to generate room for the dimension text the dimensions which we are adding here is associative and that simply mean that the dimension is always related with its parent geometry and when the parent geometry changes the dimension updates itself now to explain this I'll change some of the geometries in this drawing so I'll start with this circle now click here and using these grips let's click on this quadrant and change its radius so as you can see that the current radius is 15.77 units I'll just decrease its value and look at the radius it's now changed to 10.11 so in this case the dimension was associative and that's why it has changed now let's do the same for this side in this case you can see that the length of this side is 60.66 units now let's select this stretch tool and I'll stretch this side of the geometry here now press enter and I'll click here and as I stretch you'll notice that the dimension is also changing because it is associative dimension let's click here and here we have the changed dimension so as long as your dimension is associative it will change along with the geometry but you can break this associativity simply by moving this grip so if I move my grip from this point to somewhere over here it will no longer remain associative and now if I stretch my geometry I'll click here and now I'll stretch it you'll notice that it will not change the dimension as we have already broken the associativity of this point with this end point you can again make it associative by simply selecting the grip and moving it to this end point now it's once again associative and if you select the stretch tool the dimension will once again change along with that so this was all about modifying the dimensions in AutoCAD drawing up to this point we have used the default dimension style to create our dimension so now we will learn about creating our own dimension style and we'll create dimension using that dimension style so for that I'll go to this annotate tab and now I'll click on this drop down so when you click on this drop down you'll notice that we have this ISO 25 and also this annotative dimension style so these two are the default dimension style which will always be present in your drawing now in order to create a new dimension style click on this manage dimension styles 
Now this dimension style manager window will pop up and it will have the two dimension styles which we have already seen. So when you switch between these two dimension styles, you'll see its preview in this preview box. We'll learn more about this annotative feature later on. But for now, I'll select this ISO 25 dimension style. And now let's click on new to create our new dimension style. So when you click on this new by selecting the ISO 25 dimension styles, it will create a new dimension style, which is a complete replica or a copy of this ISO 25 dimension style. And we can later on modify that dimension style. So I'll click on new and now give it a name. So let's name it as our dim style. And obviously we want it to start with ISO 25 and that means we need to copy its dimension style and we don't want it to be annotative. So I'll keep this unchecked. Now click on continue. And we are now into this new dimension style window. Now we have lots of tabs here. So this lines, symbols and arrow, text, fit, primary, alternate units, tolerances, and all of these tabs can be used to modify different features of the dimension and extension lines. So we'll focus on some of the very frequently used tools of the dimension style. And later on in the upcoming videos, we'll obviously look at some of the advanced features of this dimension style. So currently the default dimension style looks like this. And we have used this dimension style to make all of our dimensions so far. Now, in order to change the properties of lines, the dimension line and the extension line, you need to use the first tab. Now, when you go to this lines tab, you'll see this dimensions line panel. And in this panel, all the settings which are related to this dimension line, all of these straight dimension lines can be changed. So the first property is color. Let's change it to red. And you can see that the dimension line color has been changed. Also, you can change the line type. You can change the line weight of this red dimension line. And in a similar way, we have some options here for extension line. So these are the extension lines. So you can change its color to green just to identify it clearly from the dimension line. You can obviously change the line type for first extension line, the second extension line and the line weight. If you want, you can suppress or remove the extension lines by clicking on these check boxes. And there are also plenty of options which can be changed depending upon the requirement. Now let's move on to symbols and arrows. And here you'll see lots of options. For example, the arrowhead. So first we have this close filled arrowhead. But if you want, you can change into any of these arrowheads. So I'll select this architectural tick and the arrowhead now changed. You'll also notice that with the change of this first arrowhead, the second will automatically change. But if you change the second arrowhead, it will not change the first one. Now we have these two different arrowheads, which is obviously very bad practice. So you should keep both of them as same arrowheads. Also, you can change the arrowhead type of leader line or you can change the size of these arrows. You can also select between center marks. So right now a center mark will be placed at the center of these kind of geometries. And the size of center mark is specified as 2.5. If you want to add line instead of center mark, you can do that or you can select none if you don't want any center mark. So I'll keep it at center mark. Also, we have the arc length symbol. If you want it, keep the first or second radio button checked. In this case, the arc length will precede the text. In this case, it will be above the text. And if you don't want the arc length symbol, simply select the none radio button. So the arc length symbol will only appear when you create an arc length. Now let's go to this text option. And obviously in this case, you can change the properties of this dimension text everywhere here. Now we have the text style, which is a standard and we'll learn more about these text style in the next module. For now, I'll just go to this text color and I'll change it to yellow. You can also change the fill color or the background color of this text. Let's change it to cyan. And here we have it, the background color for the text. You can change the text height and you can even draw a frame around the text. So for the sake of simplicity, I'll change the background color and I'll change it to none. We don't want any background color. Also, I'll remove this frame around our text. Now you can see that our text is placed above the dimension line and it can be seen clearly for this dimension here. 
it is placed above dimension line also in this case it is above and above now if you want it to be centered or if you want it below you can change it from these values now i've selected centered and here we have it it's now centered also for this horizontal text you can select the option from here and the view direction left to right or whatever the direction which you want now in this case the text is always aligned with the dimension line so if the dimension is aligned the text will be aligned in this case it is completely vertical so the text is also vertical but if you want the text to remain horizontal in all of the cases then select the horizontal option and the text will become horizontal in all of these cases you can also select the ISO standard value and whatever the ISO standard follows will be applied here. So I'll select horizontal as I use in most of the cases. And now let's move on to the fit tab. And in this case, we will look at two important options. The first one is annotative. So if you want to make a dimension style annotative, select this annotative checkbox. And if you want to change the overall scale of dimension, including the dimension arrows text the gap and all of these parameters you can simply add a scale in this case i've used an overall scale of one that's the default value and i'll not change it but we'll create a new dimension style and we'll change the overall scale to explain it clearly for now i'll simply click ok with these changes and i'll close it so now we will make our dimensions but before that make sure that our dim style is selected now this is the dimension style which we created and it should be selected now I'll go to the straight dimension the linear dimension and I'll add it here and here we have it the dimension will be added with the properties which we have applied even if you apply some other dimension like radius it will take the same properties and as you know that we have selected this horizontal placement for the text it has been applied also the architectural tick is here now there are some parameters here in this dimension style which we have not yet changed for example the number of decimal points and also the decimal separator which is comma in this case so let's change these values but for that i'll create a new dimension style so i'll click on this drop down and i'll select manage dimension styles so we already have this our dim style i'll create a copy of this so i'll select this and i'll click on new now i'll simply change its name to our dim style one and now select continue now we have all the properties as completely same we'll simply change some of the parameters the first one will be the overall scale now i'll change it to overall scale of two and all of the values including text height arrow size gaps and everything will change to twice of its original value now let's go to the primary units tab and here you will see values for these dimensioning formats so in the linear dimension we have selected this decimal if you want to change it to architectural so this will be the result the dimension will be shown in feet and inches similarly you can change the precision from here to see this precision value clearly in decimal simply select the decimal and you can change the precision to any decimal places and the dimension will be shown accurate up to that many decimal places here we have the decimal separator which is comma you can change it to period or to space whichever you want so i'll select period in this case if you want to add prefix or suffix with these dimensions you can do that as well and let's look at the angular dimensions value now so in this case the angular dimension is decimal degrees you can change it to grades radians degree minute second whatever you want and here also the precision is set to zero let's change it to two points of decimal now with these changes I'll simply click on OK and close it now let's make our new dimension but for that once again I'll make sure that our dim style one is selected now I'll go to angular and click on this point and click here and now add the angular dimension and here you'll see that the size of this dimension text arrow and everything is twice of its original value because we have selected that option also the decimal separator is point and the angle is shown accurate up to two decimal points because we have selected two decimal places for angle so in this way you can create and add your own dimension styles with different properties in your drawing in this video i will tell you about the dimension style overrides so 
In the previous video, we have made a dimension style and using that dimension style, we can add dimensions in our drawing. Now, what if we want to make very small change in that dimension style and what if we want to make only a few dimension with that changed dimension style? For that, obviously, we can create a new dimension style. But if you don't want to create a new dimension style, you can create a temporary override of that dimension style and you can add dimensions with that. To make this point clear, I'll go to this annotate tab and I'll make sure that this dimension style, our dim style is selected. So when you click on this drop down, you'll see a preview of that dimension style. Now with that dimension style selected, I will make a few dimensions. So I'll select linear and then I'll click on this endpoint and then I'll click on this endpoint and I'll add the dimension. So here we have this dimension with this red dimension line, green extension line and yellow text. Now let's make a small change in this dimension style. For that, I'll once again click on this drop down and I'll select manage dimension styles. Now here we have this our dim style. In order to change it or in order to add the override, simply select this dimension style and select this override button. Now it will open the modify dimension style window with all the properties which are assigned to our dim style. Now we'll make some modifications here. So I'll change the color of dimension lines to bilayer and also the extension lines to bilayer. Now I'll leave the text color as yellow and now click on OK. Now you'll notice that a new style override has been added under this dimension style. Now click on close. And let's make a new dimension. Now we have this dimension with the changed property and it's taking the properties of our dimension style override. You can even add more dimension styles and it will still take the property of the override in this way. You can remove the dimension style override from the dim style window. So click on this drop down select manage dimension style and now from this dim style window simply right click on the override and select delete you can also rename this override to make it a permanent dimension style so if you rename it it will become a new dimension style but we don't want to do that we simply want to delete that so i'll select yes and the override is no longer present but still the dimensions will have the property of the override now, if you want to remove these properties and if you want these dimensions to have the property of the original dimension style, then simply select the dimension, right click and select this option, remove style overrides and it will return back to the original dimension style. You can repeat the process for this dimension or any other dimensions also if they are present in the drawing. So this was all about the dimension style override tool of AutoCAD. In this video, I will tell you about continue baseline and ordinate tools of AutoCAD dimensioning. So I'll use this geometry and I'll start with the continue dimensioning. So using the continue dimensioning, you can add a chain of dimensions in your AutoCAD drawing. To make this clear, I'll go to annotate tab and I'll make a simple linear dimension. So I'll select the linear tool and now click on the first point here and second point here and now I'll add the dimensioning. So here we have this simple dimensioning. Now for adding dimensions for the rest of the part of the geometry, you can use either continue, baseline or any other method if you prefer. But in this case, I'll select the continue. Now to select the continue tool, go to the dimensions panel and expand this flyout and select the continue option. And before selecting this continue option, always ensure that a new dimension has been added. So this dimension which we have added here will be taken as a reference for this continue dimension. So now click on the continue tool and now you'll notice that the next dimension will start from the end point of the previous dimension. Now we only need to click at the next end point and we need to continue clicking on the subsequent end points and the dimensions will be added just like this. To exit this command, simply press enter. So now you have noticed that in this case, 
we have made this dimension and all of these dimensions were taken as a reference from this dimension so it's always necessary to make a primary dimension so that the continued dimension can take a reference from its end points in a similar way you can add a baseline dimensioning so i'll add the baseline dimensioning on this side for that once again we need to create a base dimension which can be used as a reference so i'll select this linear tool and i'll click on this point as the first point and this point as the second point and here we have it the first dimension now once again go to the flyout and select baseline and in this case the next dimension will start from the first point of our dimension which was this point so for making this dimension I have selected this point as the first point and that will become the base point or the baseline for our dimensioning now we need to click on the next point and next point and next point and all of these dimensions will start from the baseline now press enter twice to exit this command and here we have this baseline dimension now in this case if you notice closely you'll find that the gap between these dimensions is very little and in order to resolve this problem you need to modify the dimension style so i'll go to this dimension style by selecting this manage dimension styles option we have this iso 25 selected let's select modify and now go to this lines tab now here we have this baseline spacing which we need to modify so in this case it has been set to 3.75 let's change this value to 10 and that will increase the gap now click on ok and click on close now in this case the change will not become visible because we need to apply new dimensioning so i'll erase all of these dimensions and once again i'll create the base dimension and i'll click this point as the first point that will be the base point and the second point and now click here so the dimension has been added now simply select the baseline option and add the subsequent dimensions like this and here we have it all of these dimensions are added and the gap between all of these dimensions is now changed to 10 units so let's erase all of these dimensions both continue and baseline and now we'll have a look at the ordinate tool so using the ordinate tool you can specify the x and y coordinates in this case this lower left point is on the origin or it is on the 0 comma 0 coordinate value so in order to add the ordinate value go to dimensions panel and expand the first flyout and select this ordinate tool now you need to specify the first point so in this case i'll select this point as the first point and now i'll specify a point where i want to put this and here it is now in this case you can see that the coordinate value of this point is zero and this will be the y coordinate value now you can press enter to repeat this command and now i'll click on the next point here and we have this next ordinate value and once again this is the y coordinate value now this simply indicates that the first ordinate value or the y coordinate value is 0 and the second one is 33.98 that means the gap between this point and this point is 33.98 units now you can press enter click on the next point and specify the next ordinate value and these are all the values of y axis for all of these points and they can also be used for dimensioning now if you want to add the ordinate values for x axis then once again select this tool click at the point and now make it in this side or in this direction now we have this ordinate value for x press enter select the next point and here we have it so this is the x value and the distance between this and this point is 34.82 units as specified by this x value similarly you can press enter and add more x coordinate values for all of these points just like this so in this way you can add ordinate values in the drawing and these are also used in some of the situations for dimensioning so this was all about continue baseline and ordinate tools of autocad dimensioning in this video i will tell you about adding tolerances and dual dimensioning in the autocad 
drawing. So I'll start with this drawing and I'll add a simple dimension. For that I'll go to this annotate tab and I'll select the linear dimension. Now click on the first and the second point and here we have it. Now in this case we have this dimension which is simply the base dimension or the dimension without any tolerance value. So this is theoretically exact value which is not always the case. Almost every drawing has dimensions which are accompanied with tolerances. Now in order to add tolerance in this dimensioning you need to modify its dimension style. So once again I'll erase this dimension style and I'll go to the dimension style manager. So I'll click on this drop down select manage dimension styles select the dimension style which I want to modify in this case ISO 25 and select modify. Now we are in this dimension style manager. Now here we have an option of tolerances in this tab. So select this tolerances tab and in this case you'll notice that the method has been selected as none. So change this to any other value. In this case I'll select it to symmetrical and here you'll see the difference. So when you change it to symmetrical you will be able to apply a upper and lower limit. Both of them will be same and you can control the precision value of the tolerances also. So in this case the precision has been set to two decimal places. I'll keep it at two and here we have the upper value. So if you change the upper value the lower value will change equally. You can even change it to some other value for example deviation. In this case upper value and lower value can be different or you can change it to limits. In this case the upper dimension value and the lower dimension value will be mentioned. And we have the last one basic dimension in which case we don't have any of these tolerances and this is the theoretically accurate dimension which is enclosed in this rectangle. So I'll change it to deviation and precision will be two decimal places and now I'll change the upper value to 0.02 and the lower value to 0 0.03 and now I'll click on OK and close it and now let's make a new dimension once again. So I'll click on the first point, second point and here we have it. Now in this case we have the upper value and the lower value for our dimensioning. Now if you add more dimensions here all of these dimensions will have the same value the upper and lower value even when you add a radius to this drawing it will have the same value but it's not mandatory you can change these values selectively even when the tolerances are applied directly to the dimension style to change these values selectively select the dimension which you want to modify then right click and select properties now scroll down and here in the end you'll see this tolerances panel. Now from this tolerances panel hover over to this tolerance limit row and here you'll see that the lower limit has been set to 0 0.03 and the upper limit to 0 0.02. Let's change this value. So I'll change the upper limit to 0 0.01 and I'll change the lower limit to 0 0.05. Press enter and now you'll notice that the values will be changed here also. In a similar way you can select as many dimensions as possible and then you can modify their combined properties if required. So let's once again move back to the dimension style and I'll remove these tolerances. We don't need it as of now so I'll change it to none. Now let's go to this alternate units. Now using this alternate units tab you can add the alternate or the secondary unit to your dimension. So currently all of our drawing is mentioned in millimeters but if you want to have a inch dimension also added in this drawing then you can do that using this alternate units. So when you go to the alternate unit tabs you'll notice that all of these options will be inactive. To make them active click on this checkbox and that will make all of these options active and it will also add an alternate unit. Now in this case the unit format has been set to decimal so you can change any other format if you want so I'll keep it at decimal and I'll change the precision to two decimal places and here we have the multiplier which is quite important. Now in this case the multiplier has been set to 0 0.0393700 and a long string of characters. Now this multiplier will decide the value of this alternate unit. In this case 1 millimeter is equal to 0 0.0393700 inches. So whatever value mentioned on the drawing 
when multiplied with this value will result in inches. So that's the multiplier for alternate units. So in this case, I'll keep this value unchanged. But if you want to add your own multiplier value for your dimension, you can add it here. Now, the placement of this secondary or alternate unit is right after the primary value. In most of the cases, drafters prefer to keep it below the primary value. So above the dimension line, we have the primary dimension and then below the dimension line, we have the secondary or the alternate dimension unit. So I'll keep this option below primary value and I'll click on OK and close it. And now you'll notice that we have the mm value above the dimension line and the inches value below the dimension line for all of these dimensions. And in this way, we can add the alternate or the secondary dimensioning unit to our drawing. And obviously, the secondary unit will be decided by the multiplier. In this case, the secondary unit is inches because the multiplier was set accordingly as 0.0393 and a long string of characters, obviously. So that is the approximate value which needed to be multiplied with mm to have results in inches. So that was all about adding tolerances and dual dimensioning in AutoCAD drawings. In this video, I will tell you about adding feature control frame in our AutoCAD drawings. And the feature control frames are added for representing tolerances and most of the geometric dimensioning and tolerancing information. So in order to add the feature control frame containing all of the GDNT symbols, you need to once again go to the annotate tab. Now in this annotate tab at first we need to add the normal dimensioning and I'll add the normal dimension the linear dimension actually in this drawing. So I'll start with this first one. Now I'll click at the first point then the second point and I'll add the dimension. Now in this case we have the dimension but obviously we don't have the tolerances and all the related information. In order to add that we can obviously add the tolerance as we have seen in the previous video but the more accurate or the more acceptable method of adding the tolerances is using the GDNT symbol or the geometric dimensioning and tolerancing symbols. And that can be done with feature control frames. So in this case, I'll expand the dimensions panel and I'll go to this feature control frame option, which is mentioned as tolerance. So let's click on this tolerance and this funny looking geometric tolerance window will pop up. Now, in this case, most of the symbols might be unfamiliar to you but don't worry just have a look at these and if you feel really intimidated by this then have a look at the gdnt guide which was released by asme so it has nothing to do with autocad it's completely new topic as i've already mentioned now in order to start this we need to first specify the type of tolerance so click on this first box and it will show a list of all 14 symbols so select the type of tolerance from this 14 symbols so i'll select the position tolerance which is denoted by the first symbol now here a phi symbol will be added that is for cylindrical tolerance zone and now the tolerance value so that will be 0 0.02 in this case let's assume that it is 0 0.02 now we need to add the material condition modifier. So when you click on this, you'll see these three material condition modifier, the maximum material, the least material and the regardless of feature size. So you can use any of these depending upon your component. So I'll select maximum material condition. Now I leave this tolerance to and now I will add the datum. So I'll add A as the datum. And if you want to add the material condition modifier, you can click on this and you can select it or you can click on this white space if you don't want to add any of these. Again, you can add more datums if you want and you can add the material condition modifier for those datums as well. Now click on OK and add this feature control frame with its related dimension. And now here we have it. So in this case, this can be read in this way. The dimension of 76.11 unit has a position tolerance of 0 0.02 unit at maximum material condition with respect to datum A and B. And obviously we need to specify the A and B datums. Now to specify A and B datums, we'll use leader line. And we'll learn more about multi leaders and leaders in the upcoming videos. So for this case, I'll select the leader and I've already prepared this leader to show 
the datums so i'll just click on this point and now here i'll add a as the primary datum and now i'll select multi leader and i'll add the secondary datum here as b now we have these two datums and this tolerance value of the dimension will be with respect to datum a and b datum a and datum b now if you want to modify this feature control frame you can modify that simply by double clicking on it so when you double click on this it will open the geometric tolerance window and you can modify and add more values to this for example let's say that we want to add a material condition modifier with datum a so i'll click here and add the material condition modifier click on ok and here we have it now let's have a look at this drawing so in this case also if you want to add the feature control frame you need to again go to this tolerance option and once again repeat the process so i'll once again select the position tolerance obviously you can select any other value and the tolerance zone the value of tolerance the datum which is a and now here we have this projected tolerance zone so if you have any projected tolerance zone you can click on this so that will indicate the projected tolerance zone and you can specify the height of that projected tolerance zone let's say that its height is 10 units so type 10 here now click on ok and add it with the dimension so obviously we have not added the dimension in this case and that you need to add here but you can add this feature control frame with this and here we have the datum so we need to add the datum here with multi leader so click on multi leader specify the datum wherever you want so in this case i'll specify datum here and here we have it so that was all about the feature control frame tool of autocad in this video i will tell you about adding multi leaders to our drawing and you can use multi leaders to add information to your drawing using the leader lines so the leader line or the multi leader tool is available on the annotation panel so when you go to the home tab annotation panel you'll see in this drop down the multi leader and all of its related tools also the multi leader tool is available on the annotate tab and here we have this leaders panel on which we have this multi leader tool so you can select this multi leader tool from annotate tab or from home tab so i'll use it from this annotate tab and leaders panel so click on this and now it will prompt you to specify the arrowhead location so click at a point where you want to place the arrowhead in this case i'll click somewhere here and now click at the second point and that will be the second point for your leader line now you need to specify the text which you want to enter here and i'll type oil tank as the text now click outside and here we have the multi leader so this multi leader has been added to specify certain parts of the drawing in this case the oil tank and you can use it as many times as you want in your drawing so let's add a few more multi leaders so i'll click on this multi leaders and i'll click on this point now and i'll add a new text oil valve let's click on it again and this time i'll select this point and now i'll type fasteners and now click outside so here we have these three multi leaders so these three multi leaders are taking the property of the default multi leader style which is a standard and it's just similar to the dimension style which we have already seen so you can create your own multi leader style and that will decide the properties of these multi leaders you can not only add multi leaders from this leaders panel but also we have a completely different tool from where you can add multi leaders and that is called tool palettes so type control 3 on your keyboard and you'll find this tool palette so this tool palette will have lots of different objects including blocks multi leaders tables and many other autocad components but since we are interested in multi leaders i will click on the bottom of this tab list and i'll select leaders so from the list of all of these tabs select leaders and the list will populate with all the multi leader styles in this case we have the imperial samples here and also the metric samples here so i am interested in this imperial samples now here we have the first leader which is without any text so you can select it to add this kind of leader line with arrow and everything but without any text you can use this the second option to add a completely similar kind of multi leader and the third one is a leader with circle that will add 
so in this case a circle will be there at the end of this multi leader so i'll select it and now i'll click on this point and now click on the second point and this edit attributes window will pop up now from here simply add the text which you want to add so i'll add one as the text and click on ok and here we have it a text which is enclosed inside the circle similarly you can use other multi leaders like leader within a box select and this time the text will be included within a box just like this so i'll simply erase it we don't need it and now let's add a few more of these with the circle so i'll select the second point and now i'll add the second text let's type two let's select it and let's type three click on ok you can also use all of the remaining options for example hexagon triangle and other geometries so in all of these cases the trailing end will have the similar kind of geometry as mentioned here so let's now close this tool palette and this was all about adding multi leaders in our autocad drawing in the previous video we have made these multi leaders and in this video we will learn to edit these multi leaders so i'll start with this oil tank multi leader so let's click on this and you'll find these grips now using these grips you can modify many properties of these multi leaders so let's start with the landing line length so in this case you'll see this triangular grip and when you click on this grip you'll be able to increase or decrease the length of this landing line you can also change the length of this landing line using this grip so when you hover your cursor you'll see this lengthen landing and now you can change its length in this way if you want to add more leader lines you can do that as well so go to this grip but don't click hover your cursor and select add leader and now you'll be able to add more leaders like this so let's press escape and press ctrl z to get back to the original drawing now in case if you want to add extra vertex to this leader line you can do that as well so click on this multi leader and hover your cursor on this end grip and now select add vertex now using this add vertex you can add additional vertex in this case you can see that i have added this vertex and the arrow end is here somewhere over here so you can add that as well so let's press ctrl z to get back to the original multi leader there are also several tools which are available on the leaders panel which can be used to further modify these multi leaders so i'll start with the first one here which is this add leader so using this you can add more leader lines to your existing multi leader so now after selecting that add multi leader tool i'll click on this fasteners multi leader and now we have an option of adding more leader lines so i'll just click on this end point and now we have multiple leader lines indicating a single text here if you want to remove any of these leader lines simply select the option here the remove leader option and click on the multi leader now you need to click on the leader line which you want to remove in this case i'll click on this one because that's the one which we want to remove and press enter and here we have it now if you want to collect all of these multi leaders and if you want to align them into a single line you can do that with this align tool so let's click on this align and now select all of the multi leaders which you want to align so i want to align all of them so let's select and press enter now select the leader which you want to use as a reference and all of these multi leaders will be aligned with reference to that so i'll select this oil tank and now simply press enter and as soon as you will do this you will notice that all of these leaders will align in a straight line with respect to the oil tank multi leader now there is an option of collecting the multi leaders so using this collect option you can collect multiple multi leaders and you can convert them into a single multi leader but for that you need to have this kind of multi leader on which the trailing end has a block we'll learn more about blocks later on but we have added these multi leaders using the tool palette and this tool will only work on the multi leaders which we are added using tool palettes so for using that tool i'll select all of these multi leaders and now press enter so now you'll notice that all of these leaders are collected into a single multi leader and you can place it anywhere 
just like this. If you want to change the ending point of this multi-leader, you can use this grip and move it to your desired point just like this. And here we have it, the collected multi-leader. So in this way, you can modify your existing multi-leaders in the AutoCAD drawing. In this video, I will tell you about creating the multi-leader style. And up to this point, we have added multi-leaders in our drawing using the default style, which was a standard. Now, in order to add a new multi-leader style, go to this drop down and select manage multi-leader styles. So this will open multi-leader style manager window in which you can see that we have a single standard style. Now select new and give it a name. So I'll name it as our custom style and click on continue. So this will open this modify multi-leader style window. And here we have these three tabs, the leader format, leader structure and content. And using these tabs, we can modify the properties. The preview of your multi-leader will appear in this preview box. So let's start with this general panel in which we can change the type of multi-leader currently, which is set to straight. So you can change it to spline just like this, or you can even remove the leader line altogether using the none option. So now we only have the text and we don't have any leader line. So I'll change it to spline. And now we have the color option. So you can change the color to any value which you want. And we have options of line type, line weight, as we have seen in the dimension style. Also, we have the arrowhead and the size of arrowhead. So you can change any of these values which you want. Now here we have this leader structure which has two points in this case. So you can change this to multiple points. And in this case, we were required to click at the first and second point. That's why we have this two point. So if you add more leader points, you will be required to add multiple vertices for creating the multi leader. Also, we have an overall scale factor here, which is set to one. So you can change this scale factor to increase or decrease the size of multi leader collectively. And it is also very similar to the overall scale, which we have seen in the dimension style. So let's go to the content. And now we have the text option. So you can use it to change the properties of this text. So we have the default text, which is selected here, the text style, which is a standard. So we'll learn about text style in the next module. And we have the text angle and all of the remaining properties that you can obviously change. So I'll just keep these properties and I'll change a single property, which is text color. So I'll change it to red. And now I'll click on OK and click on close. Now let's make a new multi leader. So I'll select the multi leader. I'll click at this point and here we have it, the multi leader. So let's add our text. So I'll add cooling fins and click outside. And here we have the multi leader as per the changed multi leader style, which we can see here in this list also. So if you want to toggle between this multi leader style and the original multi leader style, you can change it from this list. So you can select standard. And now all the multi leaders will be made with the standard style, as you can see here. So let's erase both of them. And this was all about creating multi leader and multi leader styles in AutoCAD. Okay, so here is the question related to this module. Now we need to make dimensions in this drawing and the dimension should be exactly same as they are here in this drawing. So you need to ensure that the properties remain same. So now we'll start this with the linear dimension and you can do that you can add the dimensions from annotation panel, or you can also go to annotate tab and add the dimensions from here. So I'll simply go to home tab and I'll add it from here. So here we have the linear dimension. Now click on the first, then the second point and add the dimension. And we have lots of problems with this dimension. The first thing is size of dimension, which is very small. Now let's zoom into this and you'll find that the precision is also four, but in our original drawing, it was two decimal places. So we'll change these two values. So I'll go to annotation and click on this dimension style option. Alternatively, you can also expand it and click on manage dimension styles. Now I'll select modify and I'll go to fit tab. And from here, I'll change the overall length. So I'll change it to three and then I'll go to primary units 
and here you can see that the precision is set to four decimal places so click on the drop down and change it to two now click on ok and close it and there we have it let's zoom out now we can add rest of the dimensions so i'll go to linear once again click on this point and click on this point there we have it now the third dimension is angle over here so i'll go to this fly out select angular click on this line and i'll click on this line and there we have it okay so now we need to add a diameter over here so i'll click on the fly out again click on diameter select the circle and here we have it now once again we have a problem here so in our original drawing we can see that this extension or this extra portion is not available so this needs to be removed so i'll once again click on annotation fly out select it and i'll select manage dimension styles now go to modify and go to fit tab and here we have this extension line option so this should be off as you can see here in the preview we have this extension line but when you uncheck it that extension line will not be visible now click on ok and close it there we have it now i'll go to this fly out again select radius and i'll apply the radius to this fillet now we need to add the last dimension which is length so i'll go to again this fly out select linear click on this end point and i'll click on the midpoint here and there we have it the dimensions so now all of the dimensions are added as per our requirement in this module we'll learn about entering text and tables in our autocad drawing and i'll start with the single line text so in order to make a single line text you need to go to the annotate tab and from here you need to select the single line text from the text panel so when you expand this fly out you'll see this single line text option on the text panel so you can start the single line text tool from this fly out or you can also use its command equivalent which is text so i'll start it from here and now you need to specify a start point for your text so i'll click anywhere in the drawing area that will be the starting point for my text now look at the command line and it now prompts you to specify the height of text in this case the default height of text is 2.5 as shown in this angle bracket so i'll accept this default value so simply press enter and now the command line will change to the rotation angle and we need to specify the rotation angle in which we want to make the text which i will obviously keep at zero so i'll press enter and it will take the default value of zero now here we have this blinking cursor and we can now enter our text so for this case i'll type autocad 2018 and here we have this text in order to exit this single line text command press enter twice and here we have it so now the text is present here in a similar way you can add more lines of this single line text so i'll once again select the single line i'll click anywhere in the drawing area but this time instead of selecting the default value i'll click in the drawing area to specify the height so you can click anywhere in the drawing area and that will be the height of your text so let's click on this point so the height will be approximately equal to 1.6 units and we'll change rotation angle to 30 degrees and press enter now you can see that the text will be inclined to an angle of 30 degrees so let's type the text okay and here we have it so you can press enter once to add more lines to this single line text and once again press enter twice to exit this command and here we have it so these are all single line texts now if you want to modify any of these text entities you can do that simply by double clicking so i'll just erase both of these texts and here i'll modify this text so i'll double click on this and now you'll see the same edit text window here select the text which you want to modify in this case i want to modify this cad and i'll change it to uppercase and once you have modified the text you can simply click outside to exit this or obviously you can press enter key twice all of these properties of single line text can also be modified with the properties palette so select the text then right click and select properties so that will take you to the property palette and using this property palette you can obviously modify most of the properties related to this single line text so here we have the general tab the 3d visualization and the most important 
text tab which can be used to modify its properties so currently we can see that the height of text is 2.5 let's change this value and i'll change it to 4 and press enter and here we have it the height of text is changed also we have a width factor that will decide the width in which the text has been made so i'll change this width factor to 0 0.5 and the complete text will be fitted in the half length value and here it is in a similar way you can add an obliquing angle and that will make this text look like italics so i'll change it to 20 degrees here we have it the obliqued text and in a similar way you can change most of the other properties so with these changes i'll close this properties palette and here we have this text so this was all about creating single line text in AutoCAD. In this video, I will tell you about creating the text styles. So in the previous video, we learned about creating single line text and the single line text used the default text style, but you can create your own text style just like the dimension and leader styles. So in order to create your own text style, go to this text panel on the annotate tab and click on this and drop down. So on this drop down, you'll see all the text style which are present in the drawing. In this case, we have the annotative and standard text style and the standard text style is now active. So that's the default text style. So I'll click on this manage text styles and this will open this text style window. Here also we have the annotative and standard and we'll add a new text style. So let's click on this new and let's give it a name. So I'll name it as my text and click on OK. So here we have it, my text text style. Now we need to change some properties here and I'll start with the font. So currently you can see that txt.shx or the shape font has been selected here, but you can select from any of these fonts. So here you'll see this TT symbol, which is for true type font and also this symbol, which indicates the shape font. So you can select between any of these fonts from the list for example Arial and you will be able to see the preview here but I prefer using the shape font so I'll scroll it down here and I'll select this font simplex.shx now if you want to make this text annotative you can click on this checkbox and we'll obviously learn more about annotative in the upcoming videos here we have an option of height and if you change the value of this height it will take that value otherwise the height value which was used in this template or the height value which was used in the previous case will be used if you keep this as 0, 0.00 so i'll keep this as 0, 0.00 to use the height value which is used in the template also we have some of the effects associated with the text for example upside down so you can make text upside down by checking this box we have this option of backwards and vertical so this vertical option will only be available with some of the shape fonts but it will not be available for true type fonts so you won't find this option for true type fonts it will be deactivated and even with shape fonts not all the shape fonts support this vertical effect format so you need to ensure that you select the appropriate font in order to have this vertical option active we also have a width factor which can be used to change the overall width of the text. So here I can change the width factor to let's say 0 0.7 and the complete text will be fitted in the 70% area of the original text. So if you want to increase the width factor, you can change it to 1.2 and the text will expand. So I'll keep it at 1. We don't want to expand or shrink the text either. And here we have the oblique angle that can be used to add an obliquing angle that will look like an italics text. So I'll change it to 30 to show a preview and here we have it. So once again, I'll change it to zero. Now we have all of these text settings. Let's now click on set current. So let's select yes. And now the same text, my text will be set as the current text style. And you can see it here also. So here we have this current text style as my text. Now. You can click on apply if it is not selected and click on close. So now the currently active text style is my text and all of the text will be made with this text style. 
So let's make the single line text once again. So this time I'll select the text command and now press enter. And now you can see that we have an option of justify and style. So you can select this style option and you can select the text style from the command line. So currently we have this my text text style activated. If you want to change it to standard, you can type that as well here. So I'll type standard and press enter. So now our current text style has been changed and you can make your single line text here with the standard text style. And here we have it. In order to make the text using my text, select the my text from here. Once again, you can select the text tool from the flyout or from the command line. And here we have it. Now this text is taking my style text style. And here we have it the text style with simplex font. So that was all about creating text style in AutoCAD. In this video, I will tell you about the multi-line text tool of AutoCAD and multi-line text tool can be used in situations where we want more control over the text properties. So you can use this multi-line text from this flyout. So when you click on this flyout on the annotate tab text panel, you'll see this multi-line text option. So you can select it from here or you can use its command equivalent M text. So now when you select the multi-line text tool, the command line will prompt you to specify the first corner point of the bounding box of text. So select any point that will be the first point and click anywhere in the drawing area. So that will be the second point of bounding box. And this blinking cursor will appear with a text box. In this text box, you can enter your text and also you can modify its properties with this text editor tab. So this text editor tab will be available as long as you have this M text command active. So now let's type our text here. So I'll type AutoCAD 2018. And now as you can see that the text moved to the second line, which we don't want. So in that case, we can increase the size of this ruler. So we can change this width just like this. And here we have it. Now, if you want to add more lines to this text, you can do that as well. So I'll type software and now here we have it. So in order to exit this text box, click outside and here we have it, the complete text. Now, if you want to modify this multi-line text, simply double click on it and here we have it. Now we have the complete text selected. So that's one of the difference between a single line and multi-line text. In case of single line text, we were able to modify the text in single line only. But in this case, if you select any piece of text which has been made with the multi-line tool, the complete piece of text will be selected. So you can create more text using multi-line and they will be separately selected. So I'll double click on this and now we have all the text related tools which are very much similar to the text tool which you'll find on simple text processing softwares like MS Word. Now the first panel here is the style and from here you can choose the style for your text. So here we have these three styles and you can select between any of these styles for your text. So I'll keep this my text style active and now we have this height. So in order to change the height of this text, select the text which you want to change or modify. Now change its height from here and here we have it. So now the height of this 2018 text has been changed. In order to change it back, select it and change the height value. We also have multiple options like underline, overline, strike through and you can add it just like this. So I'll remove all of these. And we also have an option of superscript and subscript. So for that, let's say that we want to add eight as superscript. So I'll select this eight and now click on this superscript. And here we have it. The eight text has been added as a superscript. In order to see it clearly, I'll just press enter. And here we have it. Now, if you want to add this eight text as subscript, select it and click on the subscript box. Here we have it. Now let's select it and click on this subscript once again to return it back to the normal condition. And now if you want to stack the text, you can do that as well. For example, in this case, let's say that we want to stack this text one by two. So for that, select the complete text and select the stack option. 
and here we have it the text has been stacked to return it back select it again and click on it once again you can also change the font of these text selectively from this font drop down so even when you have applied a new text style you can change the font of these text for example here we have a new font for this text also you can modify the colors from this drop down and you can modify the justification for example in this case it is a top left let's select middle center and here we have it it's at the middle center so i'll return it back to the original position and now if you want to add symbols you can do that as well so for that we have this symbol option so click on this and now you can insert some of the very frequently used symbol like degrees plus minus diameter almost equal and all of these for example let's click on this ohm and we have this ohm symbol in order to access more symbols you can select this other option and that will provide you access to the autocad character maps and you can select your required symbol from this character map window so i'll click on this drop down and i'll select the font in this case i'll select arial and all the characters which are related to that font will become accessible here so you can select from this long list of characters which is dependent on the character which you select for example in this case i'll select this add symbol i'll select it i'll copy it and now close it now right click in the drawing area and select paste and here we have it the add symbol has been added so with all these changes let's click outside and here we have it our m text added in the drawing so you can not only create m text directly in the drawing but you can also import it from any txt file so in this case i have a txt file on the desktop so here when i go to the desktop i'll see this a cat txt file with this piece of text so i'll import it directly in the autocad for that i'll open the autocad and now once again go to multi-line text now make a text box and you'll see this text editor from this text editor select the tools panel and expand it now select import text and this will open the select file window from here select the acad.txt text file click on open and here we have it the complete text has been imported so now you can change the width here for this text box and click outside and we have it the text has been imported so this is quite a fast method of importing external text in your autocad drawing and that was all about creating multi-line text in autocad In this video, I will tell you about creating and formatting table in AutoCAD. So we can start table from this tables panel of annotate tab. So when you click on this tables panel, you'll see all the tools which are related to table. So you can use this table icon or you can also use its command equivalent table. So when you click on the table tool or when you select the table command, you'll see this insert table window. Now in this insert table window, you'll see the standard table style which will always be present in your drawing and you can add as many styles as possible. So that we'll learn in the next video. For now we have this standard table style. Now I will leave rest of the options at their default and now let's go to this insertion behavior. In this case, let's select this specify insertion point option now you can specify number of columns number of rows the width of column and row height so in this case i'll change number of columns to three which it is and number of rows to seven if you don't have these values change it to that and we'll change the column width to 63.5 and row height to one unit now i'll not change any property in the cell styles and click on ok now we have this table here let's click and the table has been added in this drawing area so this is one way of making the table let's go to the table tool again and we'll create the same table but with a slightly different approach so i'll go to table and now i'll select specify window i'll keep rest of the options at their default now we have number of columns and rows active but in this case column width and row height is deactivated so you can change it to any other value for example here if you change it to row height 
number of row value will be deactivated. So you can keep any of these two options active. For this case, I'll select number of rows and number of columns and I'll change it to three and seven and now click on OK. So in this case, we have a perfectly customizable table. So I'll click at the first point and now I can decide the width and height of this complete table. So I'll click here and here we have it. The table has been added. So let's remove this table. And now I'll look at this one. So in this case, we have this table and it will behave just like the MS Excel table. So if you are familiar with Microsoft Excel tables, you will find it pretty easy to work with. In this case, if you click on any of the cell, you'll notice that we'll have this table cell option with all the table formatting tools, which are generally available in the Microsoft Excel as well. And when you click the complete table, simply by selecting them with the crossing or selection window, you'll see these grips, which can be used to modify the size. For example, you can click on this grip and change the length. Also, you can click on this grip, and change the height. You can even resize these cells like this. So now I'll press escape key and I'll modify the properties here. So I'll start with the first cell here. Now, if you want to enter any text in this, simply select it and now type your text. So I'll type marks statement and here we have the text. Now click outside to accept the text value. Now in this case, I'll add a text here. So I'll type the serial number. Let's type one here and let's type two here. So now we have added these two. In order to add rest of the values, you don't need to add all of these values. You can simply select both of these text and now select this script and simply drag it down and it will add all the remaining text values. So it will intelligently find out the pattern in which you are adding this text information. And here we have the order one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now click outside and here we have it. Currently, you can see that the justification of all of these texts is not proper. It's aligned at the top right. So I'll change it. So for that, I'll select all of these cells and now go to the cell styles and here we have this top right justification. Let's change it to middle center. And we have these texts at the middle center of all of these cells. Now, if you want to add or remove more cells, you can do that as well. For example, I'll select this cell. And now if you want to add a complete row or a column, you can do that. So here we have this insert above, insert below in rows. So I'll select insert below and we have a new row here. If you want to delete any of these rows, simply click here and the row will be deleted. Similarly, you can add more columns. So I'll click on this cell and now I'll select insert right and a new cell has been inserted in the right. If you want to delete, simply select delete column and the complete column will be deleted. If you want to change the background color of these cells, you can do that as well. So I'll select this marks statement cell. And now here we have the color which we can apply here. So in this case, let's select this color and here we have it. The color has been applied to the cell. If you want to merge cells, you can do that as well. So in this case, let's say that we want to merge both of these cells. For that, I'll select both of them. And now here in the merge panel, select this merge all. And both of these cells will be merged into a single cell, just like this. Now, if you want to avoid accidental change of information in any of these cells, you can do that as well. So you can do that simply by locking the cells and to lock the cells, select it and then go to the cell format panel and from here, select the cell. So you can select only the content or format or both. So in this case, I'll select content as well as format and the complete cell has been locked. And when you move your cursor, you'll see this lock icon. In order to unlock it again, simply select it and go to unlocked option. And here we have it. So in this way, you can create and modify most of the properties in this AutoCAD table. In this video, I will tell you about creating table styles in AutoCAD. So in order to make table styles, once again, I'll go to the tables panel. And from here, I'll select this drop down.
and now here you'll see the standard table style which is already present to add more table styles click on this manage table styles and this will open this table style window from here once again I'll select new just like the text and dimension style and I'll give it a name so I'll name it as my style and now click on continue and here we have it new table style window so in this case we can modify most of the properties of this table to create a completely new table now we have the first drop down here in which we can select the cell which we want to modify so we can select the data header or title so let's start with the title which is the first cell and we have the properties the general properties like the fill color which will be let's say red in this case and we have the alignment which is middle center we don't want to change it also if you want to change it to label or something else you can do that or you can change the margins we are not going to change any of these values now I'll go to text and here you can change the text style so currently we have this standard and annotated text style so you have your own custom text style you can change it from there or if you want to create a new text style you can click on this box and create a new text style here and you can add that as well for this case I'll keep it at standard also if you want to select the text height you can do that and you can change the text color and the obliquing angle of your text we have the borders option here which can be used to change the border pattern of this title box so in this case the first thing is line weight you can change it to anything else which you want and obviously you can change the line type also so in this list we only have these three line types which are quite same if you want to add more select other and you can now load the line types from this list so I'll simply select the default line type I'll not change it here and also if you want to change the color of these borders you can do that from this drop down so I'll simply keep it at by layer now if you want to change the type of border you can change it from here so I'll change it to this type of border and here we have it so you can modify most of the properties in this now let's move to data and now all of these properties will be modified for the data so I'll once again change the fill color and I'll change it to blue and you can see the change here now I'll go to text and if you want to change the text color you can do that from here let's change it to yellow and here we have the change text color also you can go to borders and if you want to apply a different type of border here you can do that so I'll change the color of this border to green and now I'll select this border style and you can see that green color has been applied to all of these borders if you want you can change the line weight also for example let's change it to 0.3 and we already have it so now we have our table prepared let's click on OK and let's click on close so now our table has been prepared now if you add a new table it will be added with that table style if you have selected it in this drop down so here we have this my style I'll keep it checked and now I'll select table and with the default values I'll simply click OK and I'll add it and here we have it the table has been added with our own properties now in this case you cannot see the line width because the line width display has been off so click on this line width display and you'll be able to see the line weight in this table as well so I'll keep it off once again to see it more clearly so this was all about creating your own table style in AutoCAD in this video I will tell you about adding fields and formulas in our AutoCAD table so here we have a simple AutoCAD table with mark statement of seven students and we'll use this table in our example so I'll start with the field so using fields you can add intelligent information in AutoCAD and those informations are updated automatically so in this case I'll add the file name which is a student score in this cell here so I'll select the cell and now as soon as you'll select the cell you'll notice this table cell tab which has this field option so now from this insert panel select this field and this will open this field window from here go to the field name drop down and select file name and now select the format so I'll select uppercase format and I'll select file name only radio button 
Now also make sure that this display file extension is unchecked. We don't want the file extension and you can see the final preview here. So we have the preview here. Let's click on OK. And now we have the field here. You can see it quite clearly student score. So although the field will appear with this gray background, but when you'll plot your drawing, the gray background will not remain visible. And this gray background has been added only to identify this field from rest of the text. Now in this case, you can clearly see that the field mentions student score here. So you can see that it's written as a student score. Now, if you change the file name, the field will change automatically. So in this case, we have the student score. Let's change it. So I'll change the file name. So I'll click on save as I'll specify desktop as the location. And now I'll add card as a new text. And let's click on save again. And let's look at the field. And here we have a new field a student scorecard. So in this way, it is automatically updated and we don't need to manually change the value here. And if for some reasons you are not able to update these fields, then you can use REA command to regenerate the complete drawing and the fields will be updated. Now let's move to the formulas. So in this case, we can also use the formulas just like Excel and using the formulas, you can add the information here. So in this case, let's say that we want to add total marks of all of these students in this cell. For that, I'll select the cell and I'll go to formula. Now, obviously we need to add the sum of all of these marks. So I'll select sum and now click on the first cell from where you want to start calculation and the last cell. So we want a sum of all of these cells and here we have it. Now click outside and we have the result here as a field. So in this case, you can see that the complete value is 504. Now this is also a field as indicated by the gray background. And if you change any of these values, the field will update. So in this case, we have 504. Let's change any of these values. So I'll change this text. So we have 46 here. Let's change it to 56. Now click outside and let's look at the field. Now we have 514 instead of 504. So the field is automatically updated. And in this case also, if your field did not update it, you can use REA command to update it manually. Now here we have an average marks. Let's add that also. So I'll select the cell. Now I'll go to formula and I'll select average. Once again, I'll click on the first cell and the last cell and the average formula has been added. Click outside and we have the average value here, accurate up to the decimal points, which is specified in the current template. So we have the average 73.428571. So that was all about adding fields and formulas in our AutoCAD table. In this video, I will tell you about importing and exporting table from AutoCAD to MS Excel. So here we have this table, which we have made in the previous lesson, and we will simply export it as an Excel file. So for exporting it, I'll select the table and then right click and select this export option from the contextual menu. Now specify the location where you want to save it. In this case, I'll save it on the desktop and you can see the file type, which is CSV here. Now give it a name. I'll name it as table one, the default name and click on save. And the table has been saved on the desktop. So let's go to the desktop and here we have this table one. Let's open it. And here we have it. So now you can see that we have the table. Obviously the formatting has not been retained, but all the information which is contained in the table can be seen here as well. So you can again add the formatting to this table. So let's now close it and move back to our AutoCAD drawing. So in this case, we have exported this table, but you can also import any table from Excel to AutoCAD. So we'll do that as well. So I'll move it here and now I'll import a new table. To import it, I'll select this tables drop down and I'll select this table option. Now here we have an option of from a data link. So I'll select this from a data link option and you'll notice that all the remaining options will become deactivated. Now click on this box and select create a new Excel data link. Now give this table name. So I'll name it as our test table and I'll click on OK. 
now i'll browse for file so click on this box and browse for file so i'll go to desktop and here we have a test table so i've created this test table already in ms excel now i'll select it click on open and now you'll be able to see the preview here so click on ok and in this window also click on ok and once again click on ok and now click anywhere in the drawing area to place the table and here we have it the table has been added now this table is linked with the original table which we have on the desktop so if any of the information on the original table is changed the table here will update itself so here let's have a look at this table in this case we can see that this last cell has four five six so let's change this value in the original table so i'll go to this original table test table on the desktop and now you can see that here we have this 456 so let's change this value and let's change it to 500 okay and now let's save it and i'll close it now i'll go back to autocad and here we have a new bubble which indicates that the information in our linked table has been changed so i'll click on this link to update the information and closely look at this cell here we have this 456 let's click here and here we have it the new information has been added so in this way the table has been updated directly from the data link which is present on the desktop here in this test table so in this way you can import as well as export a table from autocad to excel file